Welcome to Gaming Assembled. This is Crusader Kings 3. So, today we are looking at a second uh, campaign for the channel. And I've got a bit of an idea for this one that I thought might be of interest. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off on the 1066 bookmark. And the idea is, with this one, is that I figure in this time one common feature of all the bookmarks that have ever been in any Crusader Kings uh, series has been that it's a rather unpredictable time. People die, people get killed in wars and other things, and diseases are rampant. And the idea is, is that sometimes inheritance doesn't always go the way that people intend. And so what I thought is that I would start off as, this time, a custom ruler. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start off as the Isle of Man. And on a custom ruler, we're going to create our own ruler. Uh, we'll go with a male ruler. And what we're going to do, let's just sort out appearance. So we'll go with uh, Northern and we'll randomize appearance. In fact, what we're going to do, when we do that, is we're going to set the age. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go to a zero year old. We are going to take away all their previous traits, education, personality, everything there is. And we're going to go with a story-driven playthrough. And the idea is, let's just randomize the appearance of our character. Let's go with... Let's go with... Let's go with that one. It can have long blonde hair. Why not? Um, right, so... Finish appearance. Uh, let's go with a Catholic name, John. It's a good solid name. And uh, yeah, we'll leave the banner as it is. We'll change the last name. We'll go with. Uh, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, we'll go with that one. Right, so we have got no stats, no nothing, no personality. Everything is just complete tabula rasa, blank slate. And so the idea of this the, of this story is that our character John here has been obviously he's been born, and his parents presumably were the rulers of the Isle of Man. And the idea is is that in the fighting and the wars that are happening in this time, obviously in this 1066, you've got the upcoming Norman conquest happening, and all this is going on in the background. It's a time of great unrest, and his parents have sadly died. And that's left little John here as the now ruler of the Isle of Man. And so the idea is, is that in this playthrough, we're taking up his story as he is. He's literally just been born yesterday. And the idea is that we jump into the game. There we go. What we've got is this boy here. And he knows nothing. He hasn't got any skills, he hasn't got any knowledge of anything of the world around him. He's just inherited this title and all this responsibility. So who's looking after him? Well, the people looking after him will be his council, of course. And so the idea is this group of five people are the ones who are going to raise John and turn him into whoever he is going to become. So let's have a little look at who we've got. So we've got our bishop, who is an honourable craven. Uh, he's humble, he's craven, he's honest, and he's an astute intellectual. And the idea of what I'm looking at here as we go through here is if the, this situation were to happen and little John has started off his life taking on this responsibility, who would naturally step forward and take, his, take responsibility for his care and, and be the one to educate him? And so we're going to look at the traits and the personalities of our council and decide who that would likely be. Now, this chap, as I say, the bishop, he's honourable, sure, so that might help. That might mean he steps forward and he's quite honest and he's humble and he would do that. But I, he's also a bit of a wuss and there's probably some more dominant characters in the council and he'd probably end up taking a step back. The evil lackey. Um, he's forgiving and callous, generous... I'm not sure he'd want to step forward, but we shall see. Let's have a look. A magnum, I can't even say that, magnum, magnanimous lackey. So he's humble, he's content, he's forgiving. So he's happy as he is, he's happy to just let things slide. A bold villain. 
Now, he might step forward because he's bold. He might take on the responsibility and, and sort of claim the child, so to speak. Um, obviously, he's he's quite fond of himself and he's quite sure he's right all the time. So maybe he would. Let's have a look at this last one. Again, he's content, zealous. So, again, I think he'd probably just sort of be happy with his lot in life and just leave it. So I'm thinking, looking at this group of characters... Probably, it would be the marshal that would step forward and say, right, I'm looking after you and we're going to do this my way. Because he's bold. He's not necessarily the nicest of characters, but he's bold and he'd step forward and do it. Um, I th so I think that's who we're going to go for. So the idea then is let's set him as our educator. And we'll set our education, therefore, as marshal. Because what we're going to do in this series... <coughs> is we are going to base, certainly in the early days, while John is only very little, we're going to base his actions on what we think uh, Ailpin would do. What he would say. Because ultimately it's Ailpin that's making the decisions. He's the one that's deciding where, where we go and what we do and things like that, at least until John grows up. And then we'll base things on his traits. And then when John has children, his children's decisions will again be based on what John thinks, because again, John will be the one making the decision then. So that's the way we're going to do this. So we're going to see how we go. So let's see how we start. So the idea is, is that I think our marshal would probably be looking at defense first because he's a military man. And so the idea is, is that he would want to, he'd, he'd recognize that we're in a bit of an isolated spot and we're a bit vulnerable. We've got a zero year old as our leader. And we've only got 300 men just over. He's going to want to sort of try and secure that a little bit. So what he would do is he'd want an alliance. Now, this guy, this marshal, Alp Elpin, is lowborn. He's not going to know the Holy Roman Emperor. He's not going to know the King of France. These people are names that he's possibly heard of, but he's never going to actually meet them. So who would he know? Well, as the marshal of the Isle of Man, he would probably go to events and you know things. He'd have some involvement with the surrounding rulers. So I think our, the surrounding rulers are our talent pool for potential brides for John. So let's have a little look at who we've got. So Ulster, just over the water, there is a daughter there. She is nine. She's a little bit old, obviously, well, a little bit older, but they're willing to accept that. And he's got 500 men, which would more than double our available manpower force. And he's a nice nearby ally, so if we did get attacked, we've got some help. You've also got the idea that, obviously, we've got this, uh, this, this crossing point here, which, again, will help us to defend our island. But there you go. Um, so we've got one possible there. Let's have a look at the next one. There's no, no girls there, so we'll have to move on. Dublin, it's just all got sums. No one there. How about North Wales? Yeah, they're all, all grown up, let's have a look. So, sums. So, I'm thinking, just, unless there's somebody over here somewhere that's particularly jumps out at us. So another Northumbrian court maybe. No, maybe not. Last one. Let's look in sort of South Scotland. There's a sister there. She's nearer in age. And that would give us an alliance with him. He's got a thousand men. So that would be interesting. Um, we'll possibly also give us an alliance with him. So he's got another 500 men, so maybe, maybe that would work, but they won't accept. So, last chance. Let's have a look at this one. No. Okay. So, there's no one over this way that's got an available um, daughter for John to marry. So, let's look at this one then. So, let's try and secure our... Island, so to speak, with an island, uh, with with an alliance. So that's that. 
Um, let's have a look as well. Who have we got for a court physician? Um, well, for now we could look at this chap. He's not a court physician, but he's quite a learned man. So maybe he would work. Uh, we could try and see if we can bring someone in. Um, let's have a little look. So let's do all inside diplomatic range, adults, um, marital status, unmarried, not in prison. Uh, there's the ruler one. Where is it? Ruler. There we go. Not a ruler. And religion. Catholicism. Let's see if there's anybody. We go with. Let's start with. Let's push our luck and go for a renowned physician first. Let's see if there's anybody on there. Mostly bishops. Uh, let's see. How about you? Have we got anyone that we could marry you to? Spy master, perhaps. Yes, there we go. So we'll bring her in, and she can marry our spy master, and then we'll have our court physician. So that's okay. We'll do that. Um, how about our knights? We have basically none. We can force our court physician to be a knight. Um, he's got prowess of twelve, so that's not bad. But we could do with some more. So let's try bringing some more in. Again, let's have a little look. Who have we actually got in our court? Most. Oh, we've got one woman. So let's see if we can find somebody that we can marry to her who can be a knight for us. Uh, so let's get rid of the physician trait. Let's go sort by prowess. Uh, so let's have a look. This guy here. Make a very good knight. Um, let's see. Ooh, hang on. Invite. Oh no, I thought I said I could invite him then. So invite to court. My courtier. He won't accept. That's a shame. Let's try another one. Um, let's see. Anybody who's willing to come. Why are they not wanting to come? The fact that she's lowborn and is important to whoever. Let's try someone a bit further down the list then, maybe. Um, let's go with this chap. See if he... Oh, no. Can't marry me. Can't marry John. Uh, let's, uh, let's go with her and him. No, nearer, but not quite. Uh, let's see. Anyone else? Let's try a bit further down. He's wandering. He's still pretty good. Let's see if we can... No, we're getting nearer. So let's try a bit further. Um, let's try this chap. Let's see what we can do. No, they don't seem to want to. Um, which is a shame. Um, one more try. Go a bit further down the list. Let's see how about him. He's pretty good still. No, they don't seem to want to. The uh, the fact that she's lowborn is uh, is not something that they're particularly fond of, which is which is a shame. I'm sure she's lovely. But anyway, right. Let's start. And let's carry on and let's see what happens. We'll try and get some more knights as we go. So the idea, as I said, is that we're going to base all of our decisions off what happens. And I've had a go at doing this before, and it works out quite nice. You get some really nice... Oh, she would have been quite good as a court tutor. Oh, it's a court tutor. Sorry, that's silly. There we go. Let's do that one. There we go. Um, so, yes, you get some quite nice... Um, some quite nice... Uh, events going on and you sort of get a really nice sort of story driven theme that's uh, that's happening um, the child will meet people across his childhood and the idea is that you can then integrate them into your your story and the plot of, of what's going on and they can become the families that form the basis of the realm later on it's perhaps sometimes a little bit of a slow going one in terms of trying to get started but you know, we'll see how we go. Um, let's see. Can
can we, now that you've arrived at our port, rather than we have to pay a load of money, no, that, was, that would have been nice. Recruit 80, well that's going to take a bit of doing, but, uh, okay, so I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll speed up time a little bit. Uh, we are not the head of our, um, our culture, and we are researching horseshoes, it would seem, so that's something I suppose. Um, so, I guess we just have to wait now, really. Um, this is the, the downside of it. It's a little bit unpredictable in terms of what's going to happen. But, as I said, it adds something, I think, to the story of it. Oh, here we go, far from home. Let's see what we got here. So, we have got this chap who is not particularly a good knight, which would have been lovely if he was. But he's bringing his family with him. And there's other kids. So that might be nice. Uh, so we've got a daughter, who's 10. We've got a son, who's 18, who again is also not a good knight, but he's quite a good chancellor. So that might be good. And we've got another daughter, who's 2. Um, so there's a couple of kids for our character to play with. We've also got his wife, who has not got any particularly amazing stats, but um, let's tell them to embrace God and they can all join us. And he's a knight, he's not a very good knight, but we've got another one at least. So, let's have a little look. Is there any events, anything that we could do with these kids? I'll tell you what we could do. We could have them, we can, we can educate them. So, our bishop possibly with that one. I'll suit her more. And this one, oh, let's hang up, this is, oh, she's already got an education focus, that's fine. And this one, what we could do to add to things is we could give them the same educator as us. And so that might mean that we end up with a friend, you never know might trigger some events, which might be a nice thing. So we'll make him that one. That's perhaps going slightly outside of our remit of doing exactly what the characters would say, but slight indulgence. So, lost in thought. My guardian Alpin tells me I should play with the other children, but they are so noisy. It has, it has to be quiet so I can hear my thoughts. So we've gained pensive. So, that's similar to the trait that one of the other kids have got. And here we go. So speaking of the other kid, we've got that. So, around the fire, what a beautiful night. The bonfire crackles and pops, spitting smoke up into the sky. The honey treat skewered on the end of my stick slowly caramelizes and I watch it slowly changing colour with interest. Alongside me, Andela is doing the same as the adults uh, drink wine and regale each other with stories of events long past, many years before. Uh, either of us were born. She and I haven't really talked much before, but it would be nice to be able to talk to someone around my own age for once. There we go. So, let's see. So, we've got our character here, John. He's pensive. He likes to think about things. Um, we had in the previous uh, pop-up that Alpin was trying to get us to socialise with the other kids. Um, so... I think we say it was fun. He was obviously trying to encourage it, and so we'll do it. We'll potentially end up getting a friend. Not yet, but maybe at some point. And that'll be nice. And uh, as I say, we can then potentially try and weave her into our story as we go, which would be really good. So. In terms of, oh, meet peers, that would be good. Again, Alpin wants us to do that, so that would be quite a good thing. So meet peers, a poor celebration. I cannot believe it, despite my invitations and preparations, not a single person showed up to my meet, my peer meet. Well, I don't care. I will enjoy these sweets on my own and these toys, and, and why would no one show up? Oh, no. Okay, well, that didn't work. 
But the idea is, is that, um, you know, I think in the long run, uh, I mean, we'll see how it goes and what opportunities we get. But I think we'll certainly at some point try and create the, the duchy of the Isle of Man. Because uh, on the island here, we can, the, the, the island is the duchy as well. And we can look at trying to put a second uh, holding on here, which would be uh, quite good. Um, I suppose we'll have to decide as to whether we want a city or a um, or, or, or a, a temple sort of type holding. Probably a city one gives us a bit more income. Uh, every man for himself. The forceful knock on the door clear, uh, clears every bit of drowsiness from my mind. Who disturbs a more mare? At, his, at this hour. My late night visitor is none other than Jindrich. I have to speak to you privately away from listening ears. I have discovered something very interesting. Jindrich has uncovered a secret of Alpins. He is willing to share it with me if I let him off the hook. Now, given that our decisions are Alpins, I'm not sure that we would do it. Because we've been naturally, he's, he's the only person we have ever known in terms of, um, in, in, well, just in terms of as a parent type figure. So I think we would naturally be more loyal to him than we would to Jindrich here. And so we wouldn't want to believe anything I don't think that's, that he said. So I think we say. I think we, we, we keep him in our pockets instead. I think that's the way we do it. He likes us slightly less, but that's that. Um, the Lollards in Jamataland. So this is an event that fires when someone else has embraced a different religion. Um, so it gives us an opportunity to either stay as we are, as Catholic Christian, or to convert to Lollardy in this case. Now, Lollardy, let's see, so that would make everybody basically hostile to us, which would be problematic. Um, I think the idea would, uh, pacifism, there we go, tenants pacifism, I don't think that Alpin would do that. He's a military man, he likes to fight. The idea of a pacifist religion, not going to be his thing. And the idea as well of everyone being hostile to us. Um, again, I don't think you'd see the tactical sense in that. We're vulnerable enough as it is. So I think we'd say we leave that as it is. Now I'm going to slow this down one second because it also occurs to me that what we've not done is we're going to do marriages for these people. So let's quickly do that before we carry on. Um, so our Chancellor here he would want someone who is good as a Chancellor as well. We can try and make his stats out a little bit better perhaps. So if we go and marry him off to there. And the idea is, is that if we can try and keep the idea of a story, if these people are the beginnings of the family of the Council who advise us generation after generation, then that sounds pretty good to me from a story-driven perspective. Um, so... Go for someone slightly younger, go for her, Joanna. And uh, Alpin, who would Alpin marry? So he'd want somebody who's good at good with the sword as well, he'd probably value that. Um, hmm, that's interesting. Would he marry her? That would make an interesting dynamic, but I don't think he would. Um, she'd she'd be he'd see her as a child just like like John. So I think maybe we go with her personality like Craven. No, he wouldn't go with her. Um, let's see, someone who's got a bit of fire in her. Vengeful Craven though still. Um, there's nobody with a bit of fire in the belly. She's stubborn. Maybe we go with her. Maybe she's the best of a bad bunch. So we go with her. 
Uh, and he's already married to our um, court physician. So, right. Pranking Kathmail. So this is our steward. My steward Kathmail is looking a, a little bit confined, I'd say. He is taking too, taking things too seriously. Uh, much too seriously. Handling matters around court in day and day out. Perhaps I ought to, to lighten the mood a bit. I wonder how Kathmail would react if his clothes would go missing. Haha. <laughs> okay. Um, so, again, it's not what we would do. It's what Alpin would do. So, would Alpin hide this chap's clothes? Probably not, but wrathful, arrogant, callous. Well, he wouldn't care. You know, he's callous, so he wouldn't really care how uh, Kathmail felt. He's quite arrogant in that he thought that if it was a good idea, he'd probably think it's the best idea ever. And wrathful, yeah, so maybe he would. Um, and this guy's a bit of a... He's sort of the, the opposite of, of what Alpin is. He's sort of humble and content and a bit forgiving. And he's sort of very much the... Probably what he would look down on. So maybe he would do it. Um, so I will sneak into his chambers and snatch his clothes. Um, no, I should be nice. No, I think we'd go with that one. So he's pinched his clothes. <laughs> okay. Um, well, there you go. Um... So he's stolen his clothes and just left him a fig leaf, evidently. Um, brilliant. Success. I managed to sneak into Kathmail's bedchamber and grab all of his clothes before he woke up. Kathmail rose quickly and gave chase down the corridor without a thread on his body. Child, give me your clothes back. I, I do not have time for this, he shouts, running all the way into the main hall before stopping and realizing what he has done. Everyone, including Kathmail, found the situation very funny and laughed until their faces turned red. Excellent. So, I'll do it again and again and again. Um, so that would mean that he... <laughs> he uh, he loses some... He, he, well, he gains some stress and gets various other things. Um, I think we would just do it the once. I think he would be, I think Alpin would, would be too serious to sort of keep doing it over and over again. That would just be ridiculous in his eyes. So I think we just do it the once and we'll leave it at that. So how old are we now? How old is our character? We are six now. So we're getting slightly older. We're, we're, we're growing up a little. But it's taking some time. But, I mean, in terms of moving forward, I think it will be a nice sort of story-driven playthrough. I think we can keep looking at the events that fire and keep trying to uh, grow our, our child up and hopefully turn him into something of the warrior. Um, perhaps he's not going to be the best warrior in the world, but... Maybe Alpin can make him into something relatively decent. Um, so I'm thinking that let's try management. We'll do this one. We'll try and meet the peers one more time. And then I think we're going to leave it there for today's episode, for this first episode of the, this, this new playthrough. And we will come back to this and we will carry on and try and do some more and see how John develops as, as a person. Let's do this first, though. Uh, so my courtier, Dristan, is getting on my nerves. Ooh, I've met Dristan before. Oh, he'd be a good knight as well, potentially. So let's educate him. Do what we'll do. Let's give... we got Alpin. Uh, she was his ward as well. Let's swap her to somebody else. Let's give her to the father, okay. and let's take him as Alpin's other ward. And so me and John and uh, Driston can grow up together. Uh, that would be good. Let's change his focus to a military one as well, because that's what Alpin would do. Um, so, my courtier Dristan is getting on my nerves. He takes every opportunity to needle me. 
seeming, seemingly taking joy in the irritation and pain he causes. I borrowed his favorite wooden warrior, and he now has to do what I tell him to. So, Dristan becomes our victim, or we'll try to be nice. So, again, for the last time today, what would Alpin do? Well, Alpin certainly wouldn't be nice. He's wrathful. He's arrogant. I think we make him our victim. And it'll toughen Dristan up. We'll meet our peers very quickly. We'll do that. This is 10 gold. And again, no one showed up. So, probably a bit of a waste that one. But never mind. So, I think we'll leave it there for now. We've met John. He's grown up to the uh, age of eight. He's getting a little bit older. He's starting to learn some skills now. He's getting a little bit of prowess. And he's, he's good at thinking about things. And we've got a uh, an 18-year-old um, fiancé who is already a drunkard, which doesn't work well. Um, but she's quite good at diplomacy when she's not absolutely hammered. Um, so that's something. Um, so, you know, we shall see how we go on that. But um, we've got our, our alliance... We've got some friends already, some acquaintances that we can take forward into this 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 life that John is building for himself, and we'll go from there. So, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, add comments. I'd love to hear what you think and what you think we should try and do moving forward. That would be really, really great. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed the episode. I will see you in the next one. See you. See you later. Thank you for now. Bye-bye.